Good evening everybody and welcome to Facebook Live. I'm Lindy Smith and this evening I'm going to be showing you how to make a little cupcake in front of me. Now I do know it's uh, Thanksgiving so happy Thanksgiving to all of you that might be watching from across the pond. I'm going to be showing you the little techniques that don't take long at all and then you can make lots and lots of cupcakes. Now do tell me if you've um, got any questions and do say hi and tell me where you come from. I love to know that you're watching me. It's really nice to know I've got lots of people out there that want to see me do things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the camera and I'm going to show you all the bits and pieces that you'll need to create the little cupcake that you can see in front of me. So I'm going to push this to one side for a moment first. Whoops. There we go. And I'm going to flip this and show you just a few bits and pieces that you need. Oh, thumbs up. Thank you very much, everyone. It's lovely that you're here. Do say hi. Tell me where you're coming from. I do love to know. Okay, so what you need is obviously a cupcake, which I've got here. I've got some paste, which I've already rolled out, just so it makes it a little bit quicker. I've got a splat cutter. Now, this is one of my own cutters. It's one of my favourites at the moment, actually. It's a stainless steel cutter, and it means you can throw it in the dishwasher, which I love. I've got a holly um, cutter there. That's a patchwork cutter one. I've got a round circle, and over here I've got some basic tools and some paint, and over here... Are some of the ones I've made earlier so I've got quite a few of them as you can see okay I'm gonna pop my camera down over here oh, we've got some hellos from Fatima in Scotland and Claire says hello and Rita says hi from Malta hello there and Kathy from Sidcup hello it's lovely that you're here I've got my my sugar paste rolled out and I'm just gonna uncover it now this is as you can see brown sugar paste you could use a nice chocolate paste that would work really really well and what I'm going to do is get one of these now this is actually can you guess what it is it's a pan scarab but obviously it's a new one it's not one I've been using uh, in my kitchen and I'm going to use this to texture the sugar paste Claire says hi from Northampton excellent hello good evening I should say shouldn't I right I'm going to press over now, can you see it's giving a nice texture to the paste? Now, this is obviously, as it's a Christmas pudding, it's meant to be the sort of texture as you turn it out of the, the pudding basin. You get a little bit that you left on the side of the bowl, and that's a texture uh, from that. Maria says, wow, nice. Oh, that's nice. Well, I hope it's going to be nice, Maria. <laughs> what I'm going to do now is take my uh, circle cutter. Now, this is just a, a simple pastry cutter. It actually comes from a set of 11. Oh, I'm going to show you the set because it's such a lovely set. Can you see? Here we are. It comes with 11 different circle cutters. Very useful. I love mine. I use it all the time. I'm going to just cut the circle and pop that down. Take away the excess paste like that. I'm going to bring my cupcake in. Now, this is a ginger cupcake and it's got um, stem ginger in it too. It makes it taste really, really yummy. The recipe I know is in my cupcake celebration book. It's probably in some of my other books too, but I can't off the top of my head remember which one's it in. Okay, and what I'm going to just do is press that down, like so. Okay, if I put it up to the light, you can see. Oh, we've got Karina from Buenos Aires. Fantastic. That's a nice place to be. Okay, now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add the raisins, because obviously one of the key ingredients of a Christmas pudding is the dried fruit. So I'm going to use a Dresden tool here and I'm just going to press into the paste in a oval shape. Okay, and put another one in here. I think actually what I'm going to do is put my hand around the other side and hold it because it'd be easier uh, for me to see. And maybe if I get the light right, you'll be able to see what I'm doing as well. Emma says she loves this. Thank you, Emma. I love showing you what I'm doing. And giving you a few inspirations for Christmas. I say this doesn't take long. This is probably the longest part of the actual process is putting the raisins on. There we are. Now apparently, I was um, traditionally Christmas puddings have thirteen ingredients inside them. I was doing a little bit of research when I was deming this um, over in Belfast last week. And they're very traditional. We've been eating Christmas pudding for a long, long time. Many, many hundreds of years. They started, I think, in, I think it was the 15th century. But it had meat in it then. 
So the recipe's changed a little bit. The one that we use today is based on what the Victorians made. Okay, there we are. There are all my raisins. Now I've left them a bit in the middle for where the, the splat's going. You see those the texture there. Now, before I put the splat on, what I'm going to do is bring the paint in. Now this is just paste colour, which I've mixed with a tiny bit of water so that I can paint. And I'm just going to paint over with the sections where I've textured the raisins. This is to bring it to life and make it look a little bit more real. Let's very quickly just put those on there. Like that. Okay. Liz says, ask the question, do you stick it to the cake? I only saw you pressing it on. I just tend to press it on, uh, Liz, because my cake is lovely and sticky. Um, it's a ginger cake, so the top surface is really nice and moist. And what I find is it will just stick, no problem at all. Obviously, if your cake's a little drier, you, you can put buttercream on there. You can put some chocolate ganache. You could put a bit of sugar syrup or maybe a bit of alcohol as it's Christmas. Have some brandy in there. Depends really on the, on the base um, that you've been using. And Maria says, where do you get the splat cutter? Well, the splat cutter is one of mine, Maria. So I'm just going to clean that. There we go. Um, so you can get it directly from me. What I'll do is I'll pop the link that you'll need on afterwards so you can see. Now, it's a gorgeous cutter. It's one of my favourite ones. And what I'm going to do is show you a tip for using it, which is to basically place the, the paste on top. So I've, I've rolled out some white paste here. Now this is, it's a modelling paste, or rather it's a bit of sugar paste with a bit of gum added to it. So I've left it quite thick because I want it to look quite effective and quite real. I'm going to put it upside down. I'm then going to bring my rolling pin in like this and just roll over the top like that. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is take the excess, oh, I'll bring my hand around here. I should know now, shouldn't I, after I've done, uh, done quite a few of these. And then I'm going to turn it over that way. You can, if you want to, just put your finger um, over the edge of the, the cutter here so you get a really nice clean cut. What one of my pet hates is um, feathering. You know when you use a cutter and you get a feathered edge, so I really dislike that. Now, I can put this straight onto my um, cupcake, so I'm just going to do this. And again, I'm not using anything. You could put a bit of water on there. But I've got soft paste going on to soft paste. You see what I'm doing? Just pushing this out with my paintbrush. There we are. Oops, I think I'm going to pull it actually. There we are. Like so. So there we go. Now the cutter comes with some little tiny splats as well, which are these ones here. So I could just cut a few of those out. This way I'm going to do the traditional way. Popping them there like that. I then use my paintbrush again, and then adding them in, I'll pop that one over here. And obviously you can add as few or as many as you want. I'll just turn that around and you can see it a bit better. There we are. Okay. Right, now obviously it's very traditional to have the holly on the top. And I've got some green paste rolled out over here. So I'll just take the plastic off. Now this is a little uh, holly cutter. I think it's a Christmas midi set. Uh, from Patchwork, but I may be wrong. I'll put the link up later so that you can have a look and see what it is. Okay, just pressing hard, giving a wiggle. Whoops. I'm going to do two of these. Now, what I've actually done is I did some earlier and I put them onto one of these foam mats. Can you see? There we are. Bring that in like that. So it's they're drying. So now I only did them a few minutes ago, really, but they it, can you see what happens? It dries in a beautiful curl shape much more like a holly leaf than a flat one would be. So what I'm going to do is bring those in. But let me just show you first what, how I'd put them on. So I just literally pick them up and then just bring them, pop them on into the dimple foam like that. And the second one, bring it so you can see. Yeah, like that. So this is one of the dried ones, or semi-dried I should say. And I've got a bit of water over here, so I'll put a bit of water on the top. And I'll just add that, oops, in there. Like so. That's the first one. And this was the second one. So I'll just bring that over like that. Okay. 
And then, of course, we need some holly berries. So I've got some sugar paste here. Can you just a roll a ball of sugar paste? And the secret of rolling tiny balls, let me move that over there so you okay. Is can you see it? I've got a little bit here. It's just to roll it in your fingers like that. Just break off little tiny pieces and just roll them. And obviously you can make them bigger if you want to. Like so. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add those on to the top now. So I'll just bring the cupcake back like that. I might actually move the change the angle. That's better. I prefer it like that. Looks more natural and real. Now, as you said, there's still a little movement in this these uh, leaves. So what you can do is pop some uh, kitchen paper behind them to help them stay in position whilst they dry. So I'm just going to add those in. So you can have as many or as few as you want. I'll just have one that's a slightly bigger. Okay. Oops. It's all fingers and thumbs here. There we go. Like so. Right, and what I'm going to do is bring some of the others in and you can see them all together then. So that was the, oops, oh, that one is, this is my old one. Now what I wanted to show you here, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little brown bits on the berries, so you can add those in as well if you want to. And then I've got these other ones here, so we can bring all these in. So it becomes very festive and very Christmassy. There we are. Like so. Now I've got a few other bits and pieces I want to show you. So um, I'm going to flip the camera in a minute. We've got Louise saying great, she loves it, and Liz says looks so effective. Very simple, very straightforward, nothing too complicated. Now you obviously you would need a splat cutter, but you can cut that by hand. That's um, you know you just get a craft knife and cut them by hand. It wouldn't be quite as quick though. Um, that I would say right. I'm going to flip this camera now. she says I'm trying to flip the camera it's not flipping I think what has happened is my hands are sticky and it's not registering <laughs> oh dearie me I wanted to show you a picture somebody says they're looking lovely oh Kathy says they look lovely thank you very much let me use my other hand I'm sorry about the juddering is that gonna it doesn't want to flip never mind you're stuck well, not being able to see me, never mind, doesn't matter. Let me just see if I can, I'm pressing buttons here, trying to um, make it work, but it's not. What I want to show you, I'm going to bring something else in here, is a big, give you some inspiration, give you a big, here we are, Christmas pudding cake, can you see that? He was one that I made quite a number of years ago, and he was done with, in a big uh, ball tin. And textured in exactly the same way I've just shown you. And obviously he's got the um, custard or brandy cream, whatever it is you like to use on the top. And that was done by hand. And then we've got the holly berries and holly leaves in exactly the same way I've shown you now. So it gives you something else um, as an idea. And if you're wondering, if you're thinking, oh, I'd love a splat cutter, but you're wondering what else to do with it. Today my husband picked this up in our local food centre. I'll just bring this in. This is actually a cake. I haven't made this. This is, as I say, made in the food centre. And they've used my splat cutter. So I was rather pleased with that. So this is from the Ludlow Food Centre. If any of you are nearby, you can go and see that. Okay, now I'm going to try again and flip the camera. If not, I'll have to say goodbye here. Let's just try that. Oh, I think it's flipping now. It is flipping. There we go. I don't know why it wouldn't flip before. <laughs> Some Joanna says, whoops, to remind me I need to need to do husband Christmas cake yes I know <laughs> time's running out on this isn't it it's you know getting ideas I haven't I must admit I haven't baked mine yet either so I must get along to that because my I've got ideas of what I'm going to do but I don't know yet what um it's finally going to end up as but anyway I hope that gives you a few ideas for some fun little things you can do uh, with your family and friends over the Christmas period and you can give them away as gifts because people love edible gifts, don't they? If you're going to a friend's for a party, you know, just you give her one, give them one of these. Put it in a bag, tie it with a ribbon and it's a fantastic little gift for anyone that loves cake. So thank you all for being with me tonight 
and I hope to see you again soon. If you've got requests, then please let me know. I'm trying to keep it sort of Christmas themed at the moment, but uh, if you've got specific ideas, specifically tools that you would like me to um, use and show you how to, um, you know, use them effectively in the best ways uh, and tips and tricks, of course. So uh, thank you very much and I'll see you again next time.